Hi everyone, today we're going to start our new book called Warriors in Winter. Chapter one is called Way of the Eagle. Wake up, Jack! Jack opened his eyes. The light was dim outside his window. His sister Annie was standing by his bed. What's going on? He asked. I heard a weird sound outside, said Annie, and guess what I saw? What? said Jack. An eagle, said Annie. A huge eagle. It was sitting on top of the lamppost in our yard. No way, said Jack. Yes way, said Annie. I'll bet Morgan sent him. Jack sat up in bed. He threw off his covers. I'm coming, he said. Hurry, we have to get back home before Mom and Dad get up. Meet you on the porch. Annie slipped out of his room. Jack climbed out of bed. He changed into his jeans, sweatshirt, and sneakers. He grabbed the backpack. Then he crept downstairs and went out to the front porch. Annie was waiting in the chilly, damp air. Dawn was breaking. There, she whispered. She pointed toward the lamppost in front of their house. An eagle was perched on top. He was dark brown, except for a ring of golden brown feathers around his neck. He stared at them with piercing eyes. Oh, man! That's a golden eagle, whispered Jack. <clears throat> the eagle spread his wings. He rose into the early morning sky and flew toward the woods. Follow him, said Jack. Jack and Annie ran down the porch steps. They crossed their yard and dashed down the sidewalk after the eagle. There, said Annie, looking up. She pointed to the bird gliding above the Frog Creek woods. Jack and Annie crossed the street. They hurried between the shadowy trees until they came to the tallest oak. Whoa, said Jack. The eagle was perched on the roof of the magic tree house. Yay, said Annie. You were right, said Jack. They climbed up the rope ladder and into the tree house. Sunlight streamed onto the floor. It shined on two small wooden tablets. Next to the tablets was a scroll. A message from Morgan, said Annie. She unrolled the scroll and read, Land by the Danube many years ago. Find a Roman legion camp dusted with snow. A Roman legion camp, said Jack. Really? What's a legion, said Annie. A legion is a unit in the ancient Roman army, said Jack. <clears throat> a legion had almost 6,000 warriors. The whole army had around 150,000 warriors. And, okay, I got it, said Annie. And what's the Danube? It's a river that ran along the border of the Roman Empire, said Jack. That was almost 2,000 years ago. How do you know all this, said Annie. Oh, my school project was on the Roman army, said Jack. Remember that model of a camp I made? And I had to explain it to my class. Oh, yeah, I remember, said Annie. Rome had the best warriors in the world, said Jack. They defended the Roman Empire for over 500 years. They, great, great, got it, said Annie. There's more here from Morgan. She read from the scroll again. You must each keep a journal. Use tablets of wax with a pen called a stylus. Write down the facts. So that's what this is, said Jack. He grabbed one of the wooden tablets. In ancient times, people wrote on these. See, the wood's covered with wax. He picked up a pointed reed. And here's the stylus. It's like a pen, just with no ink. Hold on, said Annie. Listen to this. Write what you see. Write what you feel. Do what warriors do to make your words real. How do we do what warriors do, Jack said. Roman warriors were the toughest guys on the planet. They had years of training. Well, maybe Morgan sent us something to give us magic skills, said Annie, like the baseball caps we wore to be Major League Bat Boys. They looked in the shadowy corners of the treehouse. Jack saw only the Pennsylvania book that would bring them home. Nothing here, he said. Morgan didn't even send us a research book to help us. Don't worry. You know a lot from your project, said Annie. Not enough, said Jack. Well, maybe Morgan wants us to learn more on our own, said Annie. Last verse. Give the silver coin to a hero in disguise. He will share with you his wisdom. Be home by moonrise. What?
that silver coin, said Annie. They looked around the treehouse again. Jack spotted a black coin on the floor. It was about the size of a quarter. Maybe this, he said, picking it up. That doesn't look like silver, said Annie. <clears throat> silver turns dark over time, said Jack. You have to polish it. Okay, well, we can do that later. Let's go now, said Annie. How, said Jack, there's no research book to take us to the right place. Hmm, said Annie. I have an idea. I'll just point at Morgan's words. She touched the rung. I wish we could go to a Roman legion camp on the Danube. A cry from the eagle pierced the air. The wind started to blow and the treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster and then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter two is called Rider on a Black Horse. The air was cold and bright. It feels like winter, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack, shivering. He could see his breath in the frosty air. We're wearing Roman clothes. Too bad they're not warmer. Jack and Annie both wore wool capes with tunics and boots. Instead of a backpack, Jack had a leather pouch attached to a belt. Annie had a belt and patch, pouch too. Hey, I'm dressed like a boy, she said. This should be fun. They looked out the window. Snow covered the ground. Sunlight sparkled on a frozen river. That must be the Danube, said Jack. An eagle cried out. Annie leaned out the window and looked to the right. Our eagle, she said, and that must be our Roman camp. Jack leaned out the window, too. He saw the eagle gliding toward a cluster of buildings surrounded by a high wooden fence. Oh, man, it looks just like my model, said Jack. Yep, and it's dusted with snow, just like in Morgan's rhyme, said Annie. Let's go. Jack and Annie put their tablets and pens in their leather pouches. Jack dropped the coin into his pouch, too. Then they climbed down the rope ladder. The sunlight on the snow was blindingly bright, but the air was bitter cold. Jack pulled the cape closer. The thick wool was warm and scratchy. I don't know if you've ever worn wool before, but it's really itchy when it touches your skin. Before we go any further, maybe we should write something in our journals, he said. Good idea, said Annie. They pulled out their writing tools. Watch, said Jack. He pressed and pointed he pressed the pointed reed into the wax and wrote a W. Got it, said Annie, but we should write small so we can fit everything in. Jack wrote winter. Then he looked at Annie, writing her own notes. What are you writing, he asked. Rider on a black horse, she said. Where? Jack said, looking around. Against the sun, said Annie. Jack shielded his eyes and looked at the bright horizon. A rider on a black horse was trotting over the frozen ground between the river and the camp. He wore a helmet and a red cape. Oh no, thought Jack. Should we climb back into the treehouse? Hi, Annie called, waving. The rider raised his hand in greeting. He trotted over to them. His face was mostly hidden by his helmet. Hail, children. Are you lost? He asked. Here's a picture. Jack was relieved. The man's voice sounded friendly. Not lost, said Annie. Actually, we went to visit the army camp. Have you family there? Asked the warrior. No, we just want to learn more about the Roman legion, said Jack. We're keeping journals, said Annie. She held up her tablet and stylus. Indeed, said the man. You are the first children I have met who keep journals. Well, we plan to write what we see and what we feel, said Annie. Ah, young visiting scholars, said the writer. Have you questions for me? Um, yes, said Jack. Why is the army camped here? Legion Gemina 14 is camped on the Danube to protect Rome's northern border, said the writer, to keep invaders from crossing the river. Who are the invaders? asked Annie. Anyone who wants to take away our freedom, said the writer, and destroy the Roman way of life. 
Do you know how we can get inside the camp? said Jack. Give the guard the password of the day, the rider said. Mars the victor. Like Mars the planet? asked Annie. No, like Mars, the Roman god of war, Jack said. Oh, well, who's the Roman god of peace? asked Annie. Pax is the goddess of peace, said the rider. His horse pawed the ground. Pax, I like that, said Annie. Tell the guard you plan to report on the Legion's hard work, said the rider. Say you are visiting scholars under the command of the Imperial Guard. Visiting scholars under the command of the Imperial Guard, Jack repeated slowly. Got it. That sounds really official, he thought. The rider squinted at the rising sun. I must return to my station now, he said. Farewell, friends. The rider turned his horse and galloped toward the camp. Jack and Annie watched him pass through the gateway. Let's go, said Jack, and they started walking toward the gate. He was nice, said Annie. Do you think he was an important officer in the Legion? No way, said Jack. He was just an ordinary army guy. He didn't have a plume on his helmet, and he didn't wear armor covered with medals, like a centurion. Be glad he wasn't a centurion. Why? What's a centurion? asked Annie. Super strict commanders, said Jack. They carry big sticks to whack their own men. Well, that's mean, said Annie. They should learn to use their words instead. Jack laughed. <laughs> Try telling that to a centurion. As they drew close to the camp, a guard stepped out of the gatehouse. He wore full battle armor. He carried a spear and a real shield. Hail, said Annie. Word of the day, the guard said in a deep voice. Mars the victor, Annie answered. Jack cleared his throat and called out. We are visiting scholars under the command of the Imperial Guard. We have come to write about the camp, said Annie. She held up her tablet and stylus. We plan to spread the word about the Legion's hard work. The watchman lowered his spear. Welcome to Legion Gemina 14, he said, in the reign of Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Thank you, said Annie. She and Jack walked proudly past the guard. They passed through the gateway and entered the Roman camp. See you tomorrow.